The humanities disciplines have been undergoing a, a very radical transformation over the course of the last 20 years, but it's a transformation that has deep roots in the history of the evolution of those disciplines that make up the core humanities. Um, starting really at the, at, in the immediate post-World War II era when mainframe uh, computing uh, began to have a powerful impact on other areas of research. Um, some early pioneers of what at the time was called computational humanities or computing in the humanities or humanistic computing or hum humanities informatics, uh, it had many, many different labels, began experimenting with um, applying uh, the power of mainframe uh, computers and uh, systems to the analysis of cultural objects, in particular uh, literary texts. Uh, so starting in that period, uh, we begin to see a kind of conversation emerging between the core humanities disciplines, uh, whether initially certainly text-based, but gradually in encompassing other areas of culture, and um, the uh, whole area of informatics and computer science. Uh, that conversation uh, goes on in a rather marginal way with respect to uh, its impact on the core humanities disciplines, probably for its first 20 or 30 years, but really comes to a head, I think in the, in the 1980s, starting in the 1980s, but really coming to a head in the 1990s with the revolution in personal computing and the emergence of the World Wide Web as the defining public space of our time. And it's in that context that what now has come to be called digital humanities uh, really becomes a, a transformational area of experimental scholarship within the humanities disciplines. I call it an area of experimentation because it isn't a new department, a new field in a conventional sense. It simply represents an umbrella under which we can group together a whole series of experimental approaches to some of the core questions that have animated the humanities disciplines from the very beginning. Questions like, what is the meaning of a given cultural object? How do, do different categories of objects relate to aspects of the social history of a given country or place? Uh, what uh, is truth, beauty, uh, meaning in a given social circumstance? How do myths or stories undergo transformations? Uh, how do ideas become uh, symbols, objects? Uh, how do they get translated into aesthetic, aesthetic objects and vice versa? All these kinds of questions come to animate what has come to be called the digital humanities today. By digital underscore humanities, my collaborators, uh, Ann Burdick, Joanna Drucker, Todd Presner, Peter Lunenfeld, and of course myself, uh, made an attempt to really um, group together many of these very heterogeneous phenomena under a single uh, framework, and to really talk about the deep meaning and consequences of the transformation that's taking place. Uh, what we try to look at in the book, which has been issued in an open edition uh, online, but was the hardcover version of, was uh, published by MIT Press, is to explore the past, present, and future of this area, to look at the different emerging genres and typologies of knowledge, the new knowledge forms that have emerged under the conditions that as I said, started to emerge in the 1990s and have now grown, developed, matured in the course of the last uh, 15 years. Essentially new forms of knowledge uh, that avail themselves of the tremendous power of digital media, of computational techniques, of uh, modes of uh, the organization of the production of knowledge that involve, for instance, uh, collaboration, but sometimes collaborations on a very large scale, and also that really think outside of the framework of the defining medium that has shaped scholarship in the course of the modern humanities, which is print. Print is a tremendously powerful medium. I don't believe that it's going away, but it is certainly undergoing itself a massive transformation as print moves from being the sort of normative medium of our time to being just one medium within a larger constellation of media where the norms are increasingly digitally based and print plays a supporting role. So um, digital underscore humanities, the title um, hints at 
what is the fundamental problematic of this uh, emerging world of practices, which is how does the digital intersect the humanistic? And in what ways does that conversation transform what we understand as the human or the humanities or the human sciences, to use a, a more sort of French uh, formulation, which I quite like. Uh, in fact, I prefer to the humanities, uh, the Anglo-American form. Um, and our argument in the book, and it's an argument that has deeply informed my own scholarly work, is that the digital humanities are not about a continuation of traditional humanistic uh, disciplinary habits and traditions. They go beyond that. There are many aspects that involve continuity, but they are also disruptive vis-a-vis -vis our traditional ideas about humanistic inquiry. And uh, that disruption assumes the form of, uh, to put it in a more positive framework, of uh, a set of innovative possibilities. And those possibilities involve doing better work, scholarship of greater rigor, and uh, uh, performing scholarly work that has an audience that's vastly expanded, that goes, in other words, well beyond the confines of the, tr the distribution network of print-based knowledge. Scholarship also that cuts across the boundary line between the humanities and the natural sciences or the social sciences. In other words, scholarship that opens up the question of where the humanistic begins and ends um, in some new and powerful ways. And uh, it's also scholarship, I think, in some cases, that where questions of design become integral to the scholarship itself. And maybe I'd, I'd, I'd like to say just a couple more things about that, because maybe that's the most enigmatic of the propositions that I just pronounced. But I could think of myself not so much as a historian, which is how, what I was trained to be, a, a cultural historian focused on the 13th and 14th centuries, even though I mostly work on 20th century and 21st century today. Um, uh, but I think of myself in, as a knowledge designer, principally. In other words, when we move out of the world, which was the familiar world of knowledge that shaped all of our institutions of knowledge, from libraries to archives to uh, the classroom space to universities, uh, which was print. print as associated, of course, with periodicals, but also particularly in the case of the humanities, associated with books, with uh, forms of argument that assume the form of books. As we move out of that world into a world where books and print culture has to exist within uh, an ecology that's much more complex and much richer, and where digital forms, uh, not just digital forms, but also, for instance, um, dynamic media forms like video uh, assume an increasing role in uh, forms of argumentation and knowledge presentation. Every research question becomes a design question. All of that work that print did to essentially standardize formats, to develop conventions that were shared conventions within scholarly communities, within communities of experts, that once, in a sense, constrained the production of knowledge. All those questions are right now up for grabs. And under digital underscore humanities, we really try to explore that world where, in a sense, research questions are attached to design propositions, where you have to think about what your knowledge looks like at the output phase, which is to, to say you have to think about it at every phase, right from the beginning. And every research question becomes a design question in a sense. So I think of the work of digital humanities as very much about designing in the complete sense of the word design. Everything from design in the professional sense, graphic design, information design, vi data visualizations, uh, web design, but also at the conceptual level. How do you design, what, is the, what are the genres in which you communicate or convey a complex body of, of information that is the outcome of a research process? Uh, so also design in the sort of deeper senses uh, of like the genres of that knowledge is conveyed and communicated in. So by digital underscore humanities, what I understand and what the book tries to explore is really this sense of emerging knowledge forms where the digital 
transforms, inflects, reshapes our ideas about the chunks, the units that make up argument, presentation, knowledge, science, and scholarship. I think the, there are a number of key challenges that this sense of a kind of experimental ferment uh, uh, brings up. Uh, one of those challenges uh, that uh, is, a, is a very urgent challenge in the case of the careers of younger scholars is how do you evaluate, how do you measure these emerging genres of uh, scholarly practice that don't look anything like the genres that we're familiar with and we know how to evaluate. And attached to that is the, is the, the, the core challenge of evaluating collaborative scholarship. Many of the most important, most significant digital humanities projects are projects that involve large teams of people, much more like the natural sciences than like the traditional humanities. The traditional humanities have been very artisanal. They've been very focused on the individual scholar, uh, each monk in his or her cell, basically. Uh, the digital humanities look a lot more like a laboratory. In fact, I founded in 1999 the Stanford Humanities Laboratory. Uh, after when I came to Harvard, I founded MetaLab. We, in both cases, are collaborative spaces. We look a lot more like a natural science lab or a, a, an engineering lab than we do like a uh, conventional humanities uh, uh, knowledge space. Um, and we certainly combine elements of the design studio with elements of the natural science lab. Um, for the humanities disciplines, evaluating work that is produced in this kind of way uh, has represented a real challenge. Um, a third challenge, I would say, has to do with sustaining projects beyond simply when the moment at which they are published or they're born. Uh, digital media change very quickly. A lot of the early history of experimentation uh, in the space and the conversation between the digital and the humanistic um, has disappeared because it was built in ways that have not guaranteed its sustainability. Um, and many of those projects were real one-offs. You know, they were kind of boutique forms of scholarship. So how do we build a community that produces knowledge that has a long duration, I think would be a fundamental question. <laughs>